Hello and good evening, eclectic and the world. Um, I'm Emmanuel Wakerley and we are here live streaming from Eclectic in London. I'd like to welcome you to the Here.Here with Greg Caffrey, performed by Rare Scale Concert. Uh, Irish composer Greg Caffrey is the sixth guest of the Here.Here streamed concert series and the first of the three concerts for our third season for, to, for 2021. Actually, this concert was first scheduled for March 2020 and had to be cancelled. So it's with great pleasure that we are here again at Eclectic. Uh, there would be two other concerts for here, here, one in April and one in May, but more details about that later. So here dot here has been stre streaming our concert from Farnham and from London from day one, three, day, uh, three years ago. But this is our first fully streamed concert without an audience. Thanks to Eclectic, to Edouard, to Isa, and Rob Hall, who, are, who is operating the streaming. So I'm here with Calories, with David Black, Greg Caffrey is in Ireland, in Belfast. Harry Worley, the co-curator of the series, is in Scotland, in Edinburgh. And they will join us after the concert, when we will have a Zoom discussion. So, uh, a few words about Greg. As a guitarist, Greg's fully notated compositional forms follow from the strengths of the guitar, but not just in the works for this instrument, but also translating them to others. His works share a fluidity of color and tone that allows the performer to interoperate, challenge, and respond to the written material. His works have been performed across 17 countries and are represented on 12 record labels. He has received numerous awards for composition, and current commissions include a song cycled on text by Seamus Heaney in collaboration with Seamus Heaney Home Plays, and a new concertant work for Hard Rain Soloist Ensemble, with whom he is the artistic director, and the Ulster Orchestra. So tonight, we'll pay, uh, Carla and David will play three pieces, three relatively short pieces by Greg. The first one, The Uses of Not, from 2006, for classical guitar and alto flute. Then, Tre Coranti, from 2013, for solo alto flute, by Carla. And then, the world premiere, by David, called Variations on a Dream of Tarega, from 2016. So, a few words about Carla and David. So Carla is a performer of low flutes, kingma system, and baroque flutes, an arranger, a composer, and also artistic director of Rare Scale. Her career focuses on collaboration and developing dialogue between composer, performer, and flute maker in order to extend and enhance the repertoire. She has premiered several hundreds work in the UK internationally, as a soloist and chamber musician. She's also a music program leader at Open College of the Arts, and it's a great pleasure to have Carla. David Black began playing the guitar at the age of 10, <laughs> and he now specializes in contemporary classical guitar, but he has a broad range of musical interest, from early music and the lute to electric guitar. He performs solo as one half of Albach guitar duo and with rare scale. Dav David also has a thriving teaching practice and has recently written a study book for Cursus publication. So it's with great pleasure that we have Carla and David. So the pieces are relatively short. There won't be a break between each pieces, but just time to rearrange a bit. Then we will have a five minutes break, time to connect to Zoom and welcome Greg and uh, Harry.
from Ireland and Scotland, and to have a discussion Q&A on the pieces, on uh, composition strategies of Greg and uh, different questions. And we will be welcoming questions as well that uh, you can write on the YouTube channel or Twitch also. So welcome to Here Here with Greg Caffrey. Thank you for being here. You can also donate if you want uh, to support the series and the artist. And the link is on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page of Eclectic. Thank you.
Thank you. 
Creative Arts Research Office, and we're very thankful that we can uh, continue. But uh, now it's time to sort of talk music, starting with our uh, composer, Greg Caffrey. Greg, as was uh, mentioned in the beginning at the, uh, in Emmanuel's introduction, is, is based in, in Belfast, in Ireland. And he's the director of the Hard Rain Soloist Ensemble, which is a rare thing, not just in the United Kingdom, but especially uh, in Belfast as a specialist contemporary music uh, ensemble. I was wondering, Greg, if we could just sort of to start a, a little bit about the context of what contemporary music is like in your home city and uh, you know, why, why you found the need to create an ensemble for, from, from scratch. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay, great. Um, let me start just by saying a thanks to David and Carla for such uh, fantastic performances. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and thanks to everybody there at Eclectic as well, and to uh, Emmanuel and Harry for uh, in inviting me along to be involved. It's just a shame, Harry, that we couldn't that I couldn't come over and we couldn't uh, have a you know a real concert. But um, but this is great. This is really brilliant. Um, so moving on to your question about um, why I felt the need to to um, create hard a hard rain soloist ensemble and more widely about the uh, the kind of uh, musical atmosphere in Belfast. Um, I formed the ensemble in uh, 2013 and uh, the summer before that I'd spent some time in a, a residency, an artist's residency in Paris where I, I got to meet lots of um, uh, not just musicians but artists from uh, all over the all over Europe and all over the world in fact. Um, this place receives uh, 300 artists at any given time. So the, there was a lot of kind of interchange of ideas and that kind of thing. And one of the things that struck me about um, while I was uh, talking to various musicians in particular was the amount of opportunities that they seem to have in their cities. And I'm not just talking about cities like Paris and New York and Tokyo and the big major uh, metropolises that we think about when we uh, consider contemporary music or any music for that matter, but actually smaller cities like Frankfurt, which just as an example, you know, Frankfurt, I think has a population that's roughly similar to uh, the population of Belfast. So, you know, when I heard stories of the, the uh, kinds of um, opportunities that were open to composers, for example, in places like that, and I made the comparison with what at that point was available to me as a composer uh, living in Belfast, um, it was actually quite disappointing. Now that's not to say that there wasn't any contemporary music in Belfast because that's not the case. I mean, there there's some. Uh, I mean, there's a great university here, first of all, Queen's University, and uh, aside from that, you know, there there's a um, an organisation called Moving on Music, which has done great things over the last twenty or so years, bringing in music of all kinds, electronica, free jazz, um, uh, contemporary classical music. Uh, uh, cutting edge folk music, all that kind of thing. So it's kind of been that in itself has been a, a real uh, kind of education for me over the years. So there has been um, certainly some music going on, but there, there has never been, or there hadn't been until 2013, an ensemble dedicated to uh, the performance of 20th and 21st century music. Um, and so that was what I saw, um, as something that just needed needed to be addressed, and so that's what I said about doing back then. Yeah, and I, and I think maybe if um, uh, you sort of reflect a little bit about how the grass is always greener on on other sides, and and perhaps with rare scales, many hats, and indeed many instruments, and many types of contemporary music. Um, what what's been uh, your your experience, perhaps, Carla, about um, how you found contemporary music from the from the performance point of view, and um, you know, and and your kind of uh, often a conduit between composers and musicians and venues and and as an educator as well. Uh, what what's your experience of of the sort of health of the of the contemporary music uh, scene at the moment? Nice easy question to start with. Thanks, Harry. Um, <laughs> I think there's a big thing 
about wanting to find opportunities. I mean, of course, at the moment, being able to perform is, well, this is such a luxury that we're in the same room playing music together. It's fantastic. Um, but I feel like there's a real kind of need for small venues like Eclectic, where we actually have a platform for playing all kinds of different music and being able to explore that. Um, and I think the work they're doing here is absolutely amazing. Um, and I think with, with Rare Scale, one of our biggest challenges actually has always been finding the right venues because you want something that's intimate and friendly and you know massive concert halls don't necessarily suit the music we're playing. It's chamber music, it's, it's about having the audience close. Um, so actually I think the, these kind of small projects like Eclectic make such a big difference. And in London these kind of venues are quite rare. Um, and we as Rare Scale, we're actually all over the country now. Um, and Sarah, who also plays for Hard Rain Soloist Ensemble is in Nottingham, I've been doing a lot of work with her recently. Um, we've been doing a lot online as well. Um, but I think it's this thing with new music that we have this means of adapting. And I think that's really important. We're always finding new opportunities and new ways to play. Great. So perhaps um, we can talk about, about some of Greg's music and, and, wh and what we heard. I'm always fascinated by uh, the guitar because it scares me <laughs> as a composer. Um, I, I don't really feel, you know, I'm uh, like many people used to the instrument that they they know, and uh, other other instruments feel a little bit like like voodoo. And guitar performance and guitar composition uh, seem to go even more closely together because of the sort of intricacies of of, of playing uh, uh, playing technique. It's not something that is uh, easy to, to do authentically without a real understanding of uh, of, of the instrument. Uh, so I thought I'd just sort of open that out because it's something that, that I, I hear a lot in Greg's music, even when it's not guitar music, is a kind of maybe a harmonic approach that is quite open, you know, going across intervals that, that you, you would imagine cutting across the arpeggios of, of a guitar even when, when it's on another instrument, there's a, uh, a sort of openness and a resonance uh, that, that seems to, to come across, across like uh, in, 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 all his, in all his works or in all your works, talking about you in the third person, uh, although you are in a different, a different city, so maybe that's allowed in this case. Uh, I'm just kind of, it's, a, it's an open-ended question, I suppose, but perhaps maybe a, a, opening that out as a conversation between Craig and David, I'd be really interested in in hearing your thoughts about that and how, in particular, that's interpreted through the medium of some dots on a page. So perhaps, uh, Gr Greg, if you if you mind, sort of taking a, a lead on your feelings of of the guitar. Okay. Um, well, I mean, when I write um, when I write music that isn't going to be guitar music, I don't write on the guitar, but um, I think it's possible that um, I hear things in a kind of guitaristic way, perhaps. So perhaps, uh, Harry, if you're saying that, you know, you hear, you can hear in a, in a flute piece or in a piece for uh, chamber music ensemble, if you can hear um, kind of uh, a guitar at the origin of that, then that may well be the case. It's entirely possible. Um, um, what I would say is that I've always been very uh, self-conscious of the fact when I'm writing guitar music that I am a guitarist myself and you tend to have certain um, patterns and, uh, um, you know, uh, when, you're, when you're sitting composing with the instrument on your knee, you tend to, it suggests things to you. And I always thought of that as a bit of a problem because you know, you rely on that knowledge that you have. But more recently, I've started to think of it as, I mean, it really should be thought of as an advantage. Um, if you're going to write for an instrument and you know the instrument quite well, then um, you should see that as an advantage and not a disadvantage. I did on one occasion write a piece for guitar completely away from the instrument, and I wasn't entirely satisfied with the results. I thought that would be a way of kind of uh, uh, liberating myself from this um, from this sense, and uh, 
uh, as I said, I didn't think it was uh, tremendously successful. So I, I, I think I should probably just see that um, closeness to the instrument as something that's uh, positive and not negative. And the other thing that I should say about this is that guitar is a very special instrument for me. It's the instrument that I first heard contemporary music on. I was very fortunate when I was studying guitar that my guitar teacher um, really insisted that I should um, study at that point 20th century works because this was the 20th century at, at that point. Um, so, uh, you know, composers like, for example, uh, Takamitsu or uh, Benjamin Britten, um, Leo Brar, these were uh, some of the first composers that I um, encountered. And uh, so for that reason, the guitar will always be a very uh, important instrument for me. Yeah, and, and uh, just to, to see this from, from the performer's point of view, um, I'm, guess, I'm guessing it can be clear when people aren't aware of the intricacies of, of, of the instrument. Um, is any of, of that kind of, um, does it, does it create a different starting point that you're able to uh, sort of expand upon in terms of interpreting uh, uh, the, the music? Do you, do you get a sense of maybe there's some kind of embodiment of, of the composer because you're, you're um, uh, pl you know, playing uh, in the same, there's a kind of, uh, the fact that you're holding an instrument and, and sort of in, in effect taking on the body of somebody else who's, He's written the, the, the music. Um, what, how, how does that sort of relate to, to your your point of view as a as a as a performer? Yeah. Well, prior to this concert, I was just talking to Carl about this on just before the concert started. Actually, how some of the uh, the parts of the of the the solo today, some of the fingering in there, you could really tell it's for a. Uh, a, from Greg's hand, if you like, so it fits the fits the guitarist's hands really well. Quite often, we have music written for us that is maybe not by a, uh, a guitarist or someone who knows the guitar very well, and um, you do have to do quite a bit of rewriting in in that case um, to make things work and sing on the guitar. Um, so yeah, in that case, when you have somebody who's written for the guitar and it's written well, it, it does feel as though you're you're. Um, you're following their, their fingerings and their and their intimate knowledge of the guitar and the resonances you get unexpectedly sometimes from certain chords that maybe wouldn't work on a piano, say, work really nicely on the guitar. Um, so in, in this particular piece today, um, there wasn't really much I changed or changed fingerings and things like that because it just seemed to fit very nicely. And the, um, the, the way that the instrument resonated um, this would seem to work very naturally as a performer. I think also from a duo perspective, right. so it's very I'm a, aware that um, we haven't received m uh, many questions in, in the chat, but I think you know it's a nice, it's, it's it's a bit of a strange kind of situation, isn't it, that we're um, not able to go to the pub, go to the pub afterwards, or uh, and this kind of thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, Greg, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise to those um, those of you not holding a uh, a, uh, a beverage, um, but I I I think that, you know this kind of impulse to carry on playing and uh, to to carry on thinking about music and and um, you know just keeping on writing and performing has just been something that that is has been wonderful. I think um, I'd like to sort of just slowly, slowly wrap up and, and bring bring things to a close by making sure that I kind of thank everybody who needs to be thanked. I'm always very good at uh, for, forget, forgetting some somebody, usually the most most important person. Um, eclectic is a venue, as I said earlier on, that that's very sort of close to our our, our hearts. And from the beginning of lockdown, they created eclectic off-site and it's been a space for experimental music and and uh, musicians and artists of all types to carry on performing uh, today the live stream the, the sound has been uh, sort of under the uh, 
the influence of uh, Issa and uh, and Edward Edward as well, of course, who together run uh, run the, the venue. So um, I give you a, a virtual wave and and thank you for that. Uh, Rob Hall has made light work of all this wonderful uh, camera uh, work, zooming in on things. I don't quite know how one first managed to do that, but I've really felt like I've been in the space. So thank you so much. It's it's really made uh, a huge difference. Uh, Carla and uh, David, of course, for for performing um, the the music so so beautifully and taking so much uh, care of of the music, both for, for Greg and for us as an audience. Uh, Greg Caffrey, of course, for um, writing the music and joining us and answering questions and getting a little bit of the Greg excitement when he's talking about contemporary music. You can see why he's so uh, important and pivotal in, in, in Belfast. And of course, the co-curator, co Emmanuel Wakeley, who um, has been working tirelessly for, uh, you know, for in the run-up to this. And we shall continue to do so for the next concerts that are coming up for the University for the Creative Arts here dot here re uh, research uh, concert series, uh, which is co-curated by Book Room and the Audio Research Cluster. The next one for your diaries, which may be virtual or otherwise, we'll have to see what happens, is the 29th of April, which is for voice and electronics. Then after that, also at the end of the, the month, on the 27th of May, is the Parkinson Saunders duo. So some real treats coming up for the following two for this postponed by almost exactly a year uh, concert or set of concerts. So uh, that's that's us from uh, from Belfast, from Edinburgh and from London. And I can see Emmanuel coming into wave. So thank you very much. Thank you.